Okay, guys, um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you want to know how this stuff works, um, I'm going to turn my monitors down, which I've just done, and you're going to have to see my mic boom in the frame here. Um, but I'm going to move the camera so you can see the computer. Okay, um, and I'll try to do this quickly. Feel free to throw questions into the chat. Um, but uh, all DJs do uh, is play two songs at the same time. So any of this like a DJ saved my life or they're the most amazing thing ever is crap. Uh, all you're doing is playing two songs and if you're good, you're playing them together and you're making it so that you can transition from one track to another track in a way that sounds nice. Um, so that's it, that's all you're doing. Uh, you're picking music that people like, hopefully, uh, but kind of at the end of the day, we're, we're just moving stuff around. So um, if you look at the board in front of me, I've got two wheels. Typically, DJs will have two turntables and a mixer in between. Um, and uh, so these are the two tracks. Um, and they correspond to two tracks up here on my computer. So if you see me like looking over here to the right or like moving it around, what I'm essentially doing is, let me see if I can find a good one. I'm, I'm just taking uh, tracks from MP3 form and dropping them onto the virtual decks that these controllers are interfacing with. Um, and by the way, can you guys hear me? Can someone throw a question? Uh, into uh, into the chats just so I know I'm not talking to myself. Um, so again, what you're doing is you have one track that's sort of playing out to, great, thank you. Um, you have one track that's sort of playing out to everybody. Uh, we can call that the master track. And you have another track that you're trying to line up with the master track and we'll call that the cue track. Um, so I will drop, let me see if I can find a good song here. Um, this is, we'll do this. So I'm going to drop singing on the rain in the rain into this track. Um, and this fader here is just controlling the volume of that track. And then I can, um, spin this. If I touch the top surface, I can kind of spin it around. And if I touch the outside, I can kind of nudge it forward and back. But you can see on the computer, the waveform where the beats are sort of passing through the line in the middle. And that's so I can see what's coming, if there's a breakdown um, or not. Um, and what I'll do is I'll drag another track. Um, let's see, what's another good one that will go with that? I'll try to find something without a ton of melody. Um, okay, so um, that's... Uh, okay, so this is a Newmark, um, like DJ Mix Pro 3. Um, it costs about $200. Great question, what hardware software am I using? Um, this costs about 200 bucks. Um, I have a piece of software here uh, called DJ Pro 2, DJ A-Y, yeah, DJ A-Y space P-R-O. Um, you can buy it on the App Store for about 50 bucks. Um, the reason I've bought this piece of software is right now for the next month or so, it'll let me play Spotify music um, through these control decks. Uh, they are going to be sunsetting uh, that functionality. So you won't, if you're a big Spotify user, don't buy the software for that because they're sunsetting it. Um, but there's some, you know, they integrate with SoundCloud and a bunch of other streaming services. So you're not limited to just the MP3s that are on your computer. Um, I think Beatport has a thing called Link um, that I'm probably going to be switching to down the road. Um, okay, so Newmark Deck, piece of software running. This is the entirety of the audio setup. All the other screens that I have is controlling the stream. Um, and we can talk maybe later if you want to start streaming. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process, but that aside. Um, so this is it. All I'm doing is laptop controller. Um, there's a USB cable here uh, that goes into the computer. And there's two audio, there's RCA audio coming out. It's just going into the back of the desktop uh, that I have doing the stream. So literally all the sound that you're hearing is just coming out of these two ports here. Um, okay, that's hardware, that's software. More questions, please keep them coming. Um, uh, so what I'm doing is there's a, there's a, okay. So these are, this is to control the volume, uh, on the two tracks. This is a cross called a cross fader. Basically like you move it to the left, it plays all the volume goes to the track on the left, you move it to the right, all the volume goes to the track on the right. I leave it in the middle cause I like to use these things. Um, as you'll notice as I'm popping around. Um, so platter one, there's a line of EQs across the top here. Um, so it's high, medium, low, and then this particular piece of hardware has a high pass and a low pass filter, um, which I abuse uh, a ton of. <laughs> so when you hear that sort of sound, that's me um, forcing a transition, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, all right, so 
Um, typically what you don't want to do is just drop a track down on top of another one. You want to sort of ease it in and the EQs are kind of how you do that. So you'll see me rolling the bass off a lot um, because that's sort of the loudest part. Um, and so I'll drop off the bass um, and I'll drop off probably a little bit of the treble um, just so that it doesn't, you know, it's not quite so tinny. Um, and then I'll bring the, bring the next track in. Um, and so again, that is the sort of audio piece of mixing. The other sort of critically important piece, and this is the thing that takes the most time and is the hardest, is called beat matching. Um, so uh, you can't see the slider here. So on the side of the deck, there's the slider that goes up and down, um, and this is called the pitch knob. Um, if you can imagine a turntable, the pitch knob controls the speed at which the platter spins. So how fast does the track move? Um, and if you can think about um, beat matching is you've got two cars, you first need to get them going the same speed. So one isn't just like slowly overtaking the other as they move forward. Um, and then the other is, are the, is the bass dropping at the same time? So the first thing you have to do is make sure that the BPMs are matching on the tracks. So they're both moving at the same speed. And then once you've achieved that, the next trick is you need to line up the bass kicks or the one beat. Um, uh, if you're familiar with music, four, all electronic music these days is in 4-4 four, four time. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and then everything goes on multiples of 4, 16, 32, 64. Um, and typically things happen on the sort of 32, 64 uh, mark. Um, by the way, I know nothing about music, the uh, music theory in case that wasn't readily apparent. Um, <laughs> so uh, if you know more than I do, please let me know. Um, uh, but essentially what you want to do is you want to have the first beat of the song land on a very big drop from the, uh, from the song that you have on master. So you're going to cue your song and I'll set this up in just a second. Um, you're going to cue your song so that it's the same, uh, so it's the same BPM. It's going the same speed. And then you want to start your song so that it lines up, uh, with the song that's playing. And, and I'll shut up and just do that now. So you can see what that's looking like. Um, this track over here, um, will be the, will be the sort of master track. This is singing in the ring. Um, and this one over here is going to be an Usher remix. And like I said, I'll shut up and let you watch me do it for a second. Maybe now that you know what, what, what I'm doing. And maybe I'll narrate a tiny bit. So the, the software makes it really easy for you to match the BPM. You can't see it on my screen, but um, this one is running at 128 BPM. And I can actually cheat and just move the slider until the one on the right says 128. Um, this used to be incredibly difficult to do. Uh, it's now very easy. Um, yes, the Newmark deck that I have is, a, I think it's like a Newmark DJ Pro 3 or Max 3. Um, if you just search for Newmark control deck and look through the images, you'll see something that matches this. It should cost about $199. Um, and it's uh, it's all you're going to need. Like, do not buy a $1,000 control deck. Um, that's just silly. Um, uh, all right. Uh, great question, Dan. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, right now you've got the track going on the master, and then I'm going to press this headphone cue button. You see, this one lights. This one's lit up, and that's what's playing in my headphones, but not playing out over the speakers because I've got this fader all the way down. Um, now uh, I have I've cheated, <laughs> um, and uh, so I've cheated, and I've set these things to go at the same time. So I'm going to hit play at the right time, and it'll just it'll be close. Um, the other trick is you'll see a lot of people hitting the Q button. What that's doing is it's playing one beat until I let go of the Q button. You can watch the little waveform moving in the lower, right, so on this one here on the lower one. So I'm, I'm banging on it. Um, and then I'm basically using the wheel, because I know they're going the same speed because the software tells me that, right, cheating. And then I'm using the wheel essentially to um, catch it up. Um, again, let me do it again. And again, so I've... Typically, you do this process in your headphones. I'm going to do it over the master. It's going to sound like crap at first, and then I'm going to fix it. Right, so now they're matched up. Um, and the software gives you these little white lines, so you can do it visually. Um, if, once, you, once you try this or look at the software, um, come ask me questions. Um, but once you've tried it... Um, once you've tried it out... Um, this becomes very apparent. Anyway, there's these white lines. You can line them up visually. Again, I used to have to do this by ear. There was no software. You're just doing it on vinyl plates. Very difficult. I know, old, old man over here. So, what else? Um, okay. so, like I said, you can use this wheel to control where it is. 
I'm going to pull back a little bit. Um, and again, let me just pause this real quick. What you want to do is I have my cue point set to the very first beat of the song that's going to come in. And then I'm going to wait for a very important drop. So like a one, two, like everybody jumps up in the air. That's sort of like one beat that everybody gets excited about. It's in music, we call it the drop. But you want to start your one beat on the cue track when a drop occurs. Uh, yes, the Newmark Mixtrack Pro 3 DJ controller. That sounds exactly right. Thank you. Um, so you want to you wanna basically let your master track play until you get to a very important point. And the moment you get to the very important point, you drop the, the one that you're going to cue. So again, this one here is the master. This one here is the cue. I'm banging on this because it's going to play that one. It just gets me lined up, right? So as this one's coming in, I'll go one, two, three, go. Um, uh, the cue button uh, is an all important thing that basically just lets you set the point at which you're going to start the track. Um, again, play around with it a little bit, you'll get a, you'll get a sense of it um, and, and ask me questions once, you, once you've tried it. So essentially, all right, I'm going to play the master track. Here we go. And again, I'm not going to do this in my headphones, but here it's, it's building. And then you fix it. Okay, so now I've got them going together, and you can kind of see it on the screen here where they're moving together. And and like now is when I usually pull the EQs off, um, and then slowly ease this one in. Um, okay, so now both tracks are playing together, um, and I can switch the bass. I can switch the treble. Um, but essentially they're beat match and I can like because the software is so great, I can essentially just kinda of walk away and let the two tracks want to go. Occasionally you have to bump the wheels a little bit if the software isn't quite right. Um, but it's the glass. Alright. I feel like this is coming to an end. It's better for me to We're doing this live, guys. Let it go um, and hold on and hurt you. Okay. Um gotta let it go. Um, so that's that's beat matching, um, and it's a it's a sort of basic skill. Beat matching is you've got a song coming out over the master. You have to get your song that you want to bring in up to the same speed, and then you have to start it at a moment where the and there's music. There's all sorts of music theater like music theory that lines up with this. Um, but essentially, you need to line up your track that's coming in both to be the same tempo, same BPM, same speed. Um, and then you need to start it such that the beats line up together and they're both hitting at the same time. You want the one beat on the track to come in that's coming in to match the one beat on the track that's currently playing in master. Um, uh, so that's beat matching. And then again, um, that's, the, that's basically the hardest part. Once you can do that and you do that reliably, then you start to get into the nuance of key matching and, and your cueing and sort of how you gently bring the new song in or bring the, the new song in at the right time. And that's a thing you just, you get better and better at. But as long as you can make sure the beat on the track is coming in matches the beat on the track coming out, people will basically keep dancing um, and or keep watching your stream. Uh, if you're, uh, I like, by the way, that COVID has made us all bedroom DJs. I don't care how amazing you are. You're still playing by yourself to the internet. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. I'm going to, I'm going to do it one more time just, and I'm going to talk to you. I'm trying to talk you through without breaking any more glasses about what's actually going on under the hood. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to roll this back. I'm going to roll this singing in the rain track back. Get my microphone in the right spot here. All right. No more, no more breaking glass. All right. So, uh, I'm going to play my main track. Um, the other piece is old, old school house music used to have um, 32, 64, um, 128 measure beats um, at the beginning of the, of the song. And that would be a sort of boring part where you could mix the outro of one track into the intro of the next. So like you had a boring part at the end of the song and you have a boring part at the beginning of the song. You're listening to that right now, right? So I'm, I'm starting it over again. This is just a basic beat. Um, newer, t newer tracks do a lot less of this because everybody's using loopers and maybe next week I'll talk a little bit about some of the more advanced parts of this. Again, um, I've got my BPM here on the left. Um, if I turn off mastering, you can kind of hear the pitch wobble as I move it. It sounds really annoying. Um, there's a, 
notion of pitch mastering that means you can change the BPM without changing the tone. Again, something to worry about for a later show. Okay, um, so I've got my track on the left. I've got my track on my right, and I have to use my headphones because my monitors are really low right now. Hold on a second here. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna. Oops. Okay, so typically this. Uh, typically this part is the beginning, and I'm mixing out the old track now as this one's starting to build up. Right here, here it drops out, and so typically, like when I was doing this in the mix earlier, I just killed the song that I was mixing it into, dropped it away. Um, okay, so I, when that one beat dropped, um, I started the Q track here on the right, and now I'm getting the BPMs to match up. And I screwed it up. The nice thing is when it's when you're cueing it in your headphones, you can try this as many times as you want to because, like I said, the fader on this cue track is all the way down. You can't see that because my microphone's in the way. The fader on my cue track is all the way down. Um, so I can screw this up as many times as I want to. And the audience is none the wiser. You guys are none the wiser. So when that track drops, I start the one beat on the cue track coming in. I've got them lined up. Um, and so now I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do this a little early. I would normally let the, the track here play a little bit longer, but I'm gonna pull the bass and the treble out and start bringing this in. And again, even with the software, they tend to merge a little bit or diverge a little bit. So I'm bringing up the treble on the track coming in. And then at some point, I don't know, you can call it, I'll cut the bass on this one. And then bring the bass in on the one coming oh. in. I feel like All right, so now both tracks are going. I'm just kind of letting them ride. Then it's better for me to let it go now. Um, and again, you the fix it by sort of spinning this outside wheel. So the track, this track's about to drop, and I'm gonna pull this one. And that's it. Um, so now I've got this song is the master, and I'll load up a song and I'll mix it onto this one. And by the way, the number of times that I've dropped the song onto the wrong virtual deck and cut the music or hit the Q button on the wrong one, I can't even tell you. It's, it's the worst. Looks like my... Oh, good. My time is Cam, so you're just gonna have to I'm just gonna kill that one. What's up, DJ Addy Shark? Hey, what's up, Jill? Um, okay, so I'm gonna drop another track here on this particular deck. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm setting the one beat on the track here that I want to come in while the other one is running. Um, and I'm going to set the beat and then she can set the beat and like I said, use the other one as well. Um, and then I'm going to wait. I'm basically going to wait for something interesting to happen on this track. Okay, so I got them matched up, essentially. And call a time without a beat, a strong beat of breakdown. I'll often, so that's, I'll mix a beat in from the intro of another track into the breakdown so it's not quite so boring. Um, yeah, something a little bit more advanced. This is both tracks playing at the same time, same tempo. They're matched up. I have to jog this one. So, um, I 
copy through the breakdown. I'm going to wait for a good one beat on the track coming in. Um, and I hit start. Now they're running together. I've rolled the bass and the treble off, and I'm going to start bringing in the other track. Okay, that's a little extreme. And then I'm going to mix them. Here we go. So I'm just playing with the EQs here. Again, both tracks are playing simultaneously. They're matched up. And I'm going to pull this Morgan, uh, this Burn Usher song out forever. No, um, this is me playing with the filter. And I'm basically just going to slowly pull this thing out as, the song, as this track starts to come in. And we're done. I might, again, you can write it out longer, you can cut it shorter. Uh, older tracks tend to have a lot more intro-outro space on them. Newer tracks, you tend to have to use a looper to do it. Um, this, is, this is the Newmark Mix Track Pro 3. Um, and that's it, and then I stop this track, and we've got this one going, and that's it. That is the basics of DJing right there. So if you can do that over and over again successfully, you can play a two hour set. Um, a lot of it comes down to your taste in music, how the songs move into each other, um, whether they sound good stacked on top of each other. There's a lot of nuance to it, uh, but you're basically just playing two songs at the same time. Um, it's not rocket science. Uh, buy a $200 controller, practice it a little bit yourself, um, uh, or practice it like me for 20 years. <laughs> Uh, and and you can be good at it. Um, but again, the 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 most difficult part, the beat matching, uh, getting the you know getting the BPMs to be you know the two tracks to play at the same speed, and getting the beat to drop at the same time for both tracks. Software has just made that so much easier, um, and uh, and and it'll um, it'll do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Again, you need to learn the ear. You need to learn to do it by ear. Um, so at a certain point, when you're good at doing it visually, stop looking at it and start listening. Um, uh, because the software is wrong sometimes or the software gets glitched out and it doesn't detect the beat correctly or it doesn't detect the tempo correctly. And when that happens, it's going to be very painful for you. So like building the, the skills as a, as a backup is all that, I mean, it took me six months to a year of being bad at it before I was even approaching good. Um, so give yourself some time on this. Um, Cool. So, end of the day, that's it. We're mixing one track into another track. Uh, we're using, we're matching their speed and tempo, um, and we're using some EQs and some filters so that when the songs come down on top of each other, it doesn't sound awful. Um, and then you're doing that over and over and over again, and jumping up and down to get everybody excited. <laughs> uh, and that's DJing. Um, thank you guys for hanging in for my somewhat uh, lengthy and rambly. Uh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. <laughs> there was a time uh, when I was a baby DJ. Uh, hey, just bought a controller. Congrats. Um, hook it up and, uh, and shoot me a message. Um, cool. That's it for this week. Um, thank you guys for coming. Have an awesome long weekend. Uh, I'm going to end the stream. And uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next Friday.